the opportunity to check everything on the door and to come in and just to grow in you and to learn more about your heart. God, to learn how to love like you love. I thank you for being the one. Thank you for the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. In Jesus' name. Well, hey, how are y'all? Doing all right tonight? Good. What's up? Uh, a lot of Fairview Baptists. I'm excited to be with y'all tonight. Um, my name is Grant. Uh, Grant Richardson. I'm a graduate of North Greenville University. Um, shout out. Um, Cole's in the back. By the way, give it up for Cole. Um, he, I almost didn't, I almost made, I didn't make it here tonight because I almost got like, like a spear just taken out. Like I hit the wall, you know? So, if you ever get like in a uh, in a contest with Cole guys, you know, like wrestling match or whatnot, he's gonna take you down. Um, I'm taller than him, but he like he he about took me out. So, um, anyways, so it's nice to be here tonight. Also, shout out um, my girlfriend is in the back. Her name is Eden. Everybody. So, but um, again, uh, my name is Grant. I'm from North Greenville, as my voice cracked, it's okay. Still happens. Um, and. And I'm from North Alabama. So any of y'all, any of y'all know that area? No? All Greenville? All Greenville? No? Okay. So North Alabama is so a little bit, a little bit away. Uh, it took me a while to, um, when some, once I got here, to actually like learn like the roads and stuff. I'm still like figuring out like, oh, this is 101. This is this is way down to. But um, so, anyways, um, so when I got here, um, I had to like learn like all these things. And, um, and I didn't really know how to do that. So, um, like, does everybody have a GPS now? No? No? Okay. Yes? No? Red hands? No? Yes? If you, yes? Raise your hand if yes. Okay, cool. So pretty much everybody in the room. So, anyways, GPS technology. It's good things. So, anyways. So, I have one more question for you. Um, who... How many of y'all are actually like born and raised local, larger Greenville area? Okay, great, awesome. Um, I also learned something when I got here, okay? If you say Greenville, a lot of people, if you're local, you think of downtown Greenville. But if you're not local and you say Greenville, it could like expand to like an hour and a half, all in directions. So, anyways, so we're talking about where are you headed, okay? And um, for the past few weeks, you, you have really focused in on, um, as, as in, the, in Scripture, um, what direction are you headed and why? And maybe, maybe some, some different voices or um, different influences have influenced your direction, right? Where are you headed? Or maybe is it, is it some, some things that our friends have said um, some maybe influences that may tell us to walk in a, in a different direction instead of in the right direction, in Jesus. Or maybe it was some outside voices. So like, who's a who? Who? Well, I don't know. I'm not gonna. Never mind. Um, do y'all do y'all like music? Yeah. Give it up for the worship team, by the way. You did a great job. Great job. But maybe some outside voices. Um, that are increasingly getting louder um, have, have kind of swayed your um, direction as well. But what is the primary thing, primary person, that should direct your life? Sunday school answer. Jesus, yes. So, that being said, as we get in tonight, I really want to focus on um, where are you headed, but also who is leading you and towards a white life, that being the new life, okay? So, we're going to start in Ephesians 4, um, but again, as I, as I came to, to Greenville in the area, I, I realized that I had to um, learn new things, new directions, and new roads, and um, we have signs all over the place, and they, they're there to help you um, point in the right direction, right? And some signs say, stop. And some signs say, go a little slower and go around the curve, um, especially if it's raining. Um, future driving 101 there for you. So, 
But um, we also have these signs in Scripture. And some say, stop. And some say, this way. Um, some say, here's Jesus. And some say, follow him. And so as we get in, um, we're looking at Ephesians 4. And Paul um, was speaking, um, addressing Sending a letter, right? All your letters in the middle, right? He's sending a letter to the to the Ephesians, okay? And so when he sends the letter, um, he addresses the Ephesians. He says, "Hey, y'all are doing great." He calls them fellow um, faithful servants uh, in the very beginning of his letter, and he says, "He he's this is almost a letter of like it is a letter of encouragement." He's saying, "Guys, this is fantastic. Um, y'all are doing great things, and I and I want to send a letter to you." And he says. Be faithful servants. And he goes on and he says, praise God that um, we have these spiritual blessings. He says redemption. Um, he says that God, God and you, us, are, the, are now, we can have a relationship. And he's praising him for us. Okay. And so, and then later, Ephesians 2, which is a very well-known uh, passage, he says that um, you once were far off, but you once were separate. But thank God in His grace and His mercy that we're together. And so if, you're, if you are a believer, if you a uh, Christian, if you say, Christ saved me and I follow Him, then this is, this is your identity. This is your testimony, okay? This is your story. And so as we get into chapter 4, okay, Paul is saying, he first says to walk in a manner worthy of the calling. Of you, you've been saved now. Now follow, like walk in Christ, okay? But then... As he gets into uh, 17 through 31, verses 17 through 31, if you're following along, he starts talking about this thing called the new life or direction. Okay? So, furthermore, um, direction. And so, where are you headed? Um, if you are in Christ, um, if you say, um, I, I, I've sinned, I, I, am, I, have, I am a sinner, and Jesus Christ has saved me, then this is a call for your life and your direction. Um, if not, then, then this is also a call in which you can um, follow um, when after you come to know Jesus. And so, in verse 17 of Ephesians 4, we read, it says, Therefore, I say this and testify in the Lord, you should no longer walk as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their thoughts, they are darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their hearts. They become callous and gave themselves over to promiscuity for the practice of every kind of impurity with a desire for more and more. But, there's a big sign. Change of direction. But, that is not how you learn about the Messiah, assuming that you have heard about him. And we're taught by him. Because the truth is in Jesus. You took off Put off your former way of life. The old self, the old direction, is corrupted by deceitful desires. You are being renewed in the spirit of your minds. You put on a new direction. You put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness and righteousness and purity of truth. And so, we're going to keep going. But you see this huge contrast. You see this huge switch. Okay. Um, if any of you are skateboarders, I don't know if y'all are, but you know, switch back, you know, reverse. You see this huge switch, this change of direction. So he says, this is put off, old self. And then he says, put on. This is new self. And so new self is in Jesus, and, then, and Jesus is righteousness. And so um, you, we follow in that path. So in the next verses, he says, these are differences, okay? So, he says, since, since you put away lying, speak the truth, each one to his neighbor, because we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not give the devil an opportunity. The thief must no longer steal. Instead, he must do honest work with his own hands, so that he has something to share with anyone in the world. No foul languages has come from your mouth, but only what is good for building up of someone in need. So that gives grace to those who hear. And do not grieve God's Holy Spirit. You are sealed by Him for the day of redemption. Jesus is coming back. Thank God. 
All bitterness, anger, and wrath shall be slandered, must be removed from you, along with all malice. And be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God forgave you in Christ. So, when we are headed in the old direction, the old life, he says there's thief, stealing, um, lying, tearing down, maybe, maybe um, for gossip. Um, but he says, when we fall, when we change our direction, or when God helps us change our direction, um, we go in a new life, a new direction. And so that direction breathes um, the life of Christ. In, and it's not simply something you do, but it's something you are. That being said, because Jesus and the Holy Son and the Holy Spirit, which now resides within you and seals you before the day of Jesus coming back, okay, then you live through these things, okay? And so the new life breathes righteousness um, and right living um, in a way that honors Christ. And so, um, and as we see that, um, you just, if you just walk, through, again, walk through the text, we see um, great, maybe gracious speech. Um, you're not you're not tearing down the people anymore, um, and um, and we also see like a removal of anger. But we also can see just a continual putting on off and putting on, changing our, our direction. Okay. So as we see, we are in the new life of Christ. The question is, are we walking? The question from Paul to us, um, from God to us, is that are you now? You say you say you're in Christ. But here's the challenge. Are you walking that way? Are you headed in that direction? Okay? So, um, again, when I, when I got um, to, Greenville, to Greenville, not only did I um, have to start using GPS, but I had to make new friends. Who, who in here thinks it's really hard to make new friends? Who, who in here has moved and done that? Awesome. Yeah, it's hard, right? And so when I got here, I was like, I, I don't, I don't, like, I was a new thing. I, I needed help, um, and I, it was like this, this burden, right? This, this incredibly difficult thing. Um, by the way, speaking of Cole, he probably works out because he about took me, took me out, right? Just, just running and um, and, and, and hitting, um, almost fell over, but. But if something's really heavy, okay, then track over your list. We'll get to the good part. When something's really heavy, what do you have to do? What if you can't do it? Ooh. Say that again. Can I do this? You try. Oh, I thought you said trapped. Oh, my bad. You try, try. We, we can try, absolutely. Um, but what if you can't do it? Trapped? Trapped. Trapped. So, thanks. Um, so, this new life that we're called to do, like, or to be, or to walk in, okay? New direction. What if we can't do it without receiving Christ in the first place? Right? So, um, take you back several, several years. Okay, way back. There were some people that came. They're, they're, they're considered leaders. And they came, um, and they had been leaders for a long time. Okay, think of, you might be thinking of some movies popping up in your head, some, some scenes. Okay, but they were, they were uh, oppressing their people. They were really trying to um, tell them to do things that they really couldn't do, couldn't live up to them. They were. They took something and twisted it so far into um, a thing that is never meant to be. Okay. So in that, we we see Jesus. And he comes and he addresses these these bad leaders. Okay. He, the leaders being the Pharisees, the rulers of the law, the law. Um, and he addresses them um, throughout the Gospels, um, and he tells them that. Woe to you, your bad leaders, your corrupt leaders, and let me clarify to God's people um, what this means. And so now this impossible thing is, um, this impossible connection 
man, us, God, holy. I can't, I, um, in my own power, can't close the gap. So that's why Jesus died for, for that gap and came to save me and you and us. Um, and so in that, um, he clarifies and he and he he kind of he kind of pushes them back and he says, you know, this is not quite it. And then and in that, he shows the new leader, him, great, greater than the the, the, other, the other leaders. Is he says, this this is the real heart. Okay. And so in Matthew eleven, he says this. Um, starting in verse 28. He says, after he affirmed John the Baptist who came before him, okay, he says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. All of you, take up my yoke and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um, and so, as he comes, he says, Okay, these guys got it all wrong. And, and here's the reality. He says, come to me. And, and what does he do? He offers um, an, an invitation. He says, come to me. It's not do everything that you possibly can to reach me. That's not what he said. He said, come to me and I'll offer you your rest. So for us, come, coming to Jesus means laying down um, those Maybe those things that there's other voices that we've been, that y'all have been talking about, those other voices have been leading you to, maybe sin, um, or bad choices, um, or mess ups. You don't have to do that on your own. Okay? Especially when you're surrounded by incredible leaders, that's all throughout this room, that are here for you to love. So, um, he says, come to me, and I will give you rest. Um, and, Furthermore, he says, what? Learn from me. And so, these other leaders, basically, that story so I'll show you, they sat high and mighty and said, hey, do this. He says, he, uh, Jesus offers himself as a gracious leader in which we can learn from and grow in his likeness. Meaning, Jesus just doesn't say, <laughs> do it. No, he came to be among his people and to, and to offer one in which they can actually follow, not just, um, not just listen to the um, harsh rulings in which they called him to. And so, called, called him to. So Jesus offers a way for us not only to be saved, but also to grow, to learn, and to go from the wrong direction into his direction, okay? So, um, in that, he offers us rest and a gracious teacher. And so, where are you and what direction are you headed in? Are you um, trying to do this, this thing called life all on your own? Or have you heard Jesus' call to come to him, follow, follow him in, in other verses, but also rest in him and to learn from him? He's not this good. He's not, he's, not, he's not some God that just kind of wound up the clock and said, go. He's a God that invaded, invaded um, created, and entered um, into your, our lives. It still does. So, um, as we get um, into the last verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, um, I really want to focus on this, okay? So, y'all know it's, it's pretty obvious that something goes wrong. Sometimes we break our ankles. Sometimes, um, <laughs> sometimes we get shoved into the back of the wall. Um, sometimes um, um, te technology goes wrong. Sometimes um, we have sickness and we have um, um, illness. But um, sometimes um, we, we have um, home, home struggles. Sometimes um, we are headed in the wrong direction. And um, in that, we don't have to stay apart because this. Okay, so as we know something went wrong, something first went right. It's called God created everything and it's good. Okay, and then something went wrong. Adam sinned. 
Okay? And because of that, we're affected. Um, and through the whole, old, the whole Old Testament, being the first half of the Bible, the whole Old Testament, we see these, um, these people um, interacting with each other. And um, some are things pointing to Jesus to come, and some of them just trying to lift that weight. And you said trapped. But it didn't, it, it wasn't enough. It was pointing to the one who was enough. And so after an incredibly long time of completely total silence, the one came and he started teaching and he started preaching and he said, was saying, this is me, it's Jesus. And here's my kingdom and here's, here's the life um, that I give you. And so Jesus didn't leave um, impossibility, but he actually came and he became the possibility being given new life and new direction. And so in that, um, as he called his disciples, the people who would follow him, and then as he called, uh, sent them out, Paul, you know, Paul, he went and started teaching, okay? He followed in the new direction. He followed in the new life. So, this is what he says. He says, for our sake, he, God, made him, Jesus, to be sin. Who knew no sin? Jesus was completely sinless. So that in him, in Jesus, we may have the righteousness of God. So everything went wrong, it wasn't fixable, and then Jesus fixed it. Jesus came and said, and because the perfect one, who knew no sin, took on our sin, our, our wrong direction, um, maybe our, our wrong place, um, then he took that on and now he offers us the right place. So, do you know Jesus? Okay? Do you know um, what that means? And and if you do, maybe if you've been following the wrong direction, okay, then maybe you listen to the wrong voices or the, or the, or the wrong maybe friends or influences. Um, you're not left hopeless. Jesus, Jesus is a hope. Jesus is a greater hope. He is a greatest hope. And so, in that, you can come to Him. You can come to Him. You can have a rest. You can learn from Him. But are you willing? Are you there? And um, and if you're still struggling on your own, um, know that um, Jesus invites you to have a new heart, um, to have a new direction in Him. And not um, to try to do this on your own. Um, and so, um, with that being said, um, are you are you still there in the wrong direction, in sin, um, or maybe simple choices? And will you go in a new direction, the new life, um, the hope in Jesus? Um, let's let's pray. Um, God, um, thank you for um, every student in this room. Thank you for um, the band, the worship, uh, the worship team, every leader in here. Um, thank you for your work. Thank you for um, this church. And thank you for um, the opportunity to learn from you, and grow from you, um, and to know that even, even if we are following the wrong direction, you offer us a chance to turn and a chance to learn from you. Um, and in that, we find hope for tomorrow, and we realize um, that you love us, and you want to know us, and you want us to know you. So God, I pray that not that students in this room would know that um, you love them, and in their in, in maybe in wrong um, attitudes or the choices or um, whatever it is, that you will offer them to turn and change and go in the right direction, being, being Jesus. And so. Um, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you that you can, um, and you made a way. Um, and so we see that incredible love, and, and we see that incredible, um, incredible um, mercy as, as uh, we sing your sinking, your sinking, sinking, sinking your love. We love you, and we praise you, in Christ.
Oh 
guys. Uh, we're going to transition to small groups now. Um, so if you'll find your leader um, with your great gender. If you've never been here before.